Hey, hey, y'all, it is Memorial Day weekend, and that means summer is here. You get to enjoy friends and family this weekend and hopefully some good food. It's also a chance to reflect on those who've laid down their lives defending our great nation. For all of our military families out there watching, thank you for putting yourselves in harm's way on our behalf. We know that you make huge sacrifices so that we can enjoy living in a country that is striving every day to inspire the world, to treat every person with dignity and love. Thank you for leading the way. This week, we're online only, but next week would be a great Sunday to join us in person, even if you've never attended Access Church. We'll be kicking off a new series with Clay Scroggins, who's always funny and practical and thought-provoking. So if you've never been to Access, or it's just been a while, join us in person at 10.30 a.m. this next Sunday. And hey, thanks for taking a few minutes to check in with us here at Access Church. Your time is valuable. And just by watching this video, you're making a smart investment. We're gonna share some great music that was recorded in my backyard and they echo our prayers to God. So I encourage you to allow the words of these songs and the music to speak to you for the next few minutes. And then stick around for a great message from Andy Stanley, Rules for the Road. that we called sin and shame They were like prisons we couldn't escape But you came and you died and you rose Those walls are rubble now Remember those giants we called death and grave they were like mountains that stood in our way But you came and you died and you rose Those giants are dead now This is our God, this is who He is He loves us This is our God, this is what He does He saves us for the cross, beat the grave, let heaven and earth proclaim, this is our God, King Jesus. Remember that fear that took our breath away, faith so weak that we could barely pray, but He heard every word. Every whisper Now those altars in the wilderness Tell the stories of His faithfulness Never once did He fail And He never will This is our God This is who He is He loves us this is our God, this is what He does, He saves us. He bore the cross, beat the grave, let heaven and earth proclaim. This is our God, King Jesus. Who pulled me out of that pit? He did, He did. Who paid for all of our sin? Nobody but Jesus Who pulled me out of that pit He did, He did Who paid for all of our sin Nobody but Jesus Who rescued me from that grave Yahweh, Yahweh Who gets the glory and praise Nobody but Jesus Who rescued me from that grave Yahweh, Yahweh, who gets the glory and praise? Nobody but Him. This is our God. This is who He is. He loves us. This is our God. This is what He does. He saves us. He bore the cross, beat the grave. Let heaven and earth proclaim. This is our God. King Jesus. 
cross beat the grave Let heaven and earth proclaim This is our God, King Jesus Um, vacation season is upon us, and I hope hopefully you'll get a break sometime this summer to go do something fun. But um, even if you don't, I, I hope that you this there's a, a sense of vacation for you this summer, as most of us take advantage of the summer. Um, actually, my family, my entire family, Sandra's parents, brother and sister, extended family, 17 of us, um, they all left yesterday to go to the beach to go to Hilton Head without me, which tells should tell you how important you are to me that I stayed behind. <laughs> But then I got to thinking, or how unimportant I am that they went ahead to vacation and um, um, left me here. So what we're gonna do in the spirit of summer vacation, in the spirit of summer vacation, today's message is entitled, as I mentioned, Rules for the Road, Rules for the Road, five tips, five tips um, to ensure that you reach your destination safely. But of course, my, um, my real intent in this message is to take these road rules or rules for the road and apply them to our daily lives. Because Tom Cochran, who actually wrote that song, is exactly right. He, he, the, the beginning of the, uh, the song says this, life is, life is like a road you're on. Life is like a road that you travel on when there's one day here and the next day gone. You only get to live each day one time. But the um, road of life or the, the, uh, the adventure of life is actually more complicated than a highway because we are all born, or we come equipped with rear view mirrors. What we don't come equipped with is a reverse, right? There, there are no do-overs. You only get to do your 20s once. And you look in the rear view mirror and you see how you did your 20s and you're like, I would like to go back and do some of that. And then you look and it's just, you know, park and it's drive and, and park is only momentary, right? But we just, we just can't go back. So we, we all have regrets because we all have a rear view mirror, but there are no reverses. And some of us, if we're honest, it's you know, temperament, personality, we spend a way too much time looking in the rear view mirror of our lives and you know, obsessing on our regrets. But the truth is the future from this moment forward is like a road we're on and it's what we do from this point forward that makes all the difference. And of course we can learn from our mistakes, but you can't live your life looking in the rear view mirror just like you shouldn't drive looking in the rear view mirror. And especially with life, because again, there's just no way to go back. And this is what we all have in common, whether you're a person of faith or not a person of faith, we all wanna get the future right. We just all wanna get it right. And we all wanna arrive safely in some destination and hopefully these five rules will help you get there. So rule number one, rule number one, don't travel alone, don't travel alone. We say this all the time around here that life is better connected because you were made for community. That life is better connected because you were made for community. So you travel with friends. You just don't allow yourself to get isolated. And in certain seasons of life, because of the pain and the things that we've gone through, and again, personality, there's always the temptation to be a little bit isolated. So I wanna encourage you to ignore that voice in your head. Ignore that voice in your head that says, I don't need anybody because you were created to live in and to operate in community. You do need some bodies around you. We were created for that. But who we do life with oftentimes determines how our lives go, right? And one of the tricks then, one of the, the things that, again, I'm gonna put some language around something we've all um, um, experienced from time to time. The trick in life when it comes to who we do life with is don't simply gravitate toward acceptance. Don't simply gravitate toward acceptance. Um, acceptance is a powerful, powerful draw, right? But don't simply gravitate toward acceptance because that can be a trap. Acceptance is magnetic. And where this is most important is in the transitions of life. You're leaving high school to go to college. You're leaving college to go to grad school. You're leaving grad school to start your first job. You're leaving the city to go to another city. You've just gotten out of a relationship and you're looking for a new relationship. In every single transition in life, in every single transition in life, especially relationally, we are prone to gravitate toward acceptance. That is the person or the people that accept us first 
oftentimes, without giving much thought to it, become the people that we spend a season of life with. So when it comes to who you do life with, don't simply give in to the magnetic draw of the person or the first group of people who show up and extend an invitation, even though they're probably maybe great people and you know as sincere as they could possibly be. Because the people who get on the inside of our lives often determine the direction and the quality of our lives. And don't simply be content, this is so important, don't simply be content to do life with people who share your tastes. And oftentimes the connecting point is taste. We like the same music, we like the same restaurants, we're in the same generation, we're from the same you know, part of the country where we share certain tastes. Look for people, this is so important, especially in the transitions, look for people who share your values. You know what a value is? A value is what you have predetermined is most important to you. There are things that are most important to you. And when you find people, and sometimes you kinda gotta move through some groups of people, good people, wonderful people, just not the right people. When you can find people that you share your values with, that they have the same values that you have, even though they may, may not eat at the same restaurants or go to the same concerts, when you are able to do life, begin to do life with people who share your values, they will have your back you will have their back and there is a synergy of values that will ensure that at the end of this season of life, that you will still be prioritized around the things that you have decided are most important in life and most important for you. And you'll get the most out of life. The author of Proverbs said it this way, whoever walks does life with, the wise automatically over time becomes wise. That is, and, and wisdom, we talk about this all the time, wisdom is understanding and living as if life is connected. That what happens today impacts tomorrow. That what happened yesterday is gonna show up in my life today, that life is connected. And so the author of, uh, of, of Proverbs says this, when we do life with, when we walk in life with, when we do life with people who are wise, who understand that life is connected, that I've gotta be disciplined in this season because of what I want in the next season, you become wise. But then there's a contrast because the liter Proverbs literature always has these, these, um, these contrasts, sometimes two, sometimes three. But the companion of a fool, and this is so interesting, the companion of a fool, and a fool in um, you know, Proverbs literature or literature that's you know, primarily Proverbs, there's a specific definition, definition for a fool. A fool is someone who lives life without care or who is careless. That's like, this is what I'm gonna do today, yeah, but How's that gonna impact you tomorrow? Well, that's tomorrow. This is today. Life is disconnected. The companion of fools, and the, it's interesting, he doesn't say the companion of fools will become a fool. I mean, walk with the wise, you'll become wise. The companion of fools doesn't necessarily become a fool. This is why giving into the gravitational pull of a group of people can be so dangerous if we're not careful. The companion of fools may never become a fool, but the companion of fools will suffer the same consequence as a fool because that's who they're traveling with. That's who you're traveling with. So bottom line is kind of this, T travel with people who are taking care of themselves, because if they're taking care of themselves, they will help you take care of yourself and you will help them take care of themselves as well. So don't travel alone. Now, rule number two is kind of an offshoot of rule number one. Rule number two is simply this, don't pick up strangers. Don't pick up strangers. Now, I need to define stranger, okay? A stranger is someone who is strange, <laughs> that's what a stranger is. Or now, honestly, we're all a little bit, of strain, little bit strange to somebody, right? So someone who, let's just say, someone who is stranger than you, okay? That's what I mean by a stranger. Um, when my, my mom, who passed away a few years ago, was very, very outgoing. My dad, not so much outgoing. And my mom, wherever she went, she would just meet people and she was very friendly. She would begin conversations with people in line. She would begin conversations with, with strangers all the time. And this would kind of get on my dad's nerves. And he would say to her, Annie, don't talk to strangers. I can remember my, hear my dad says, Annie, don't talk to strangers. And my mom would say, well, after I meet them, they're not strangers anymore. <laughs> So my mom is literally a person who never met a what? She never met a stranger because she was so outgoing and which was a great trait. So what I'm not saying, I'm not saying don't meet people and don't be friendly, okay? And the reason I tell you that story is this part of the story. When I was in college, she flew to North Carolina to spend some time with her mom 
And when she came back, I'll never forget, we're kind of gathered around the kitchen and she said, she put her hands on her hips, she said, well, I finally met a stranger. <clears throat> And what had happened was she was flying back and she was sitting next to a guy and he had had a little bit too much to drink and I'll just leave it there. She finally met a stranger, but it was so funny to hear her say that because it wasn't like she didn't have guardrails. It wasn't like she wasn't dialed in to, there's just some people in the world that you just need to be careful around. She was super friendly, but she understood there's, there, at some point there's a, you know what? I can't travel with you. So bottom line on this one is simply this, be kind, that's a fruit of the spirit, be kind but be careful, careful of who you allow in your vehicle, careful about who you allow in the inner circle of your life. Because it goes back to, to rule number one, he who walks with the wise goes wise, the companion of fools. You may never be a fool, but if you're too close to the people who aren't living life according to your values, when something happens to them, it may happen to you as well. So I wanna just kind of ask this question as we move on. Is there anyone you're doing life with, if you're real honest, that they make you less healthy? Um, they, they cause you to doubt yourself. They, they seem to always be slowly and maybe subtly chipping away, chipping away at your values. They're kind of dismissive of your values. And at times you're almost intimidated to be yourself because of how they're gonna respond. In fact, over time, you have found yourself becoming a different person when you're around that person. That is a stranger and you need to drop them off. God loves them, you can't handle them. Maybe someday you will be able to handle a person like that. But if you, if your life is being bent and moved and drawn in a direction that creates you know, tension on the inside, dings your conscience, you find yourself doing things you never intended to do, you find yourself drifting from your values, you find yourself being dishonest with another group of people because again, suddenly you find yourself, there's just too much duplicity, you're kind of living two different lives. That's a stranger and you need to drop them off. And there's nothing more difficult perhaps than ending what seems to be a friendship or a relationship. Rule number three, you said, Andy, this, you thought this was supposed to be fun. It, it, it's kind of fun. Okay, now, rule number three is this. I want you to choose, a, when you're traveling, right? You choose a destination, you don't just travel, right? You choose a destination and borrow a map. This is kind of a two-part thing. Choose a destination and borrow a map. Here's what I mean by choose a destination. Um, everybody ends up somewhere in life. The when, the when, just humanly speaking, and the when in terms of being a Jesus follower, the when is to end up somewhere on purpose, right? And just as in a long road trip, there are multiple legs, you know, the first day we went here, second day we went there, third day here, stay two days there, fourth day, it's just as there are multiple legs on, on a, a road trip, there are multiple seasons in life, right? Multiple seasons in life. And it is so important in each season of life to determine your destination in that season. Now, determine essentially, determine what you want your life to look like in each, se in, in each season or in this season. And here's why, again, this is so important. Obviously, you don't wanna drift, nobody wants to drift. And if we don't decide, here's the thing, if we don't choose what we want this season to look like or what we want to look like at the end of the season, if we don't choose circumstances and people and life in general, just, they just decide for us because the days keep clicking by, the days keep clicking. Life is a highway, another day, another day, another day, rear view mirror, uh-oh, no reverse, another day, another day, another day. So why wouldn't we just decide? Because again, life is connected. This season leads to the next. If I don't set the correct destination for this season, I won't be prepared for the next one. This is what wisdom dictates, that I am thinking about this season, not simply in light of what's right ahead of me, but right in front of me, but ultimately what's ahead of me because one season leads to the other. Each season builds on the other, right? And you, you know this, wishing, wishing won't get you there. It goes back to um, what I call the principle of the path. We, we've talked about this in the, in the past, that direction, direction, not intention, determines our destination. This is true when you're driving, this is true when you're living. It's the direction, not the intention that determines your destination, okay? You can drive north with the intention of going to Key West. You will never get to Key West. I don't care what your intentions are, right? You can intend and you can, you can pray and you can trust God 
and you will end up in Canada, okay? It just, it just doesn't, it, the intention is almost irrelevant. Intention should, should lead us quickly to some sense of direction. So in every season of life, in every season of life, we need to choose what the destination is, not for our entire lives, but for this season, because the seasons are connected, because life is a highway and there's another destination and there's another destination coming down the road. So decide now, decide now, so that when you get to the end of this season, you'll look back on what you need to look back on to ensure that you're ready for the next season. Now, the second part of this is borrow a map. And here's what I mean by that. Somebody has already been to where you're hoping to arrive, right? I mean, somebody's already been there. They've been there and they've done that and they've done it poorly or they've done it well, but somebody has traveled this road before. And here's the thing, and this is kind of insulting, but when you, when you transition into a new season of life, you don't know what you're doing. How could you? You've never done it before. I mean, the, the, the ultimate example of that is, you know, <laughs> we had our first child and, you know, we stayed a couple nights in the hospital and um, the nurse comes in and says those awful things. This is what she said. She said, she smiled when she said it, but it was terrible. She said, Mr. Stanley, if you'll pull the car around to the front entrance of the hospital, I'll bring Mrs. Stanley down and Andrew and you can go home. <laughs> and I thought, by ourselves? I don't even know how to change a flat tire. You're sending me home with a baby, right? Could, would you come home? Is there anyone who could come home with us? I mean, do you remember this? It's like, I don't know what I'm doing. Well, in other seasons of life, we just think we know what we're doing, but how could we possibly know that every season of life is different? So the wisest thing you could do is find somebody and borrow their map. The other way to do this is you know some people who have kind of down the road from you and sort of accomplished what you hope to accomplish either professionally or academically or maybe marriage and family. And here's my suggestion. You get their email address and you email them. You say, you know what, my wife and I, or hey, I've just got into this new job or I've just moved to the city or whatever. And I have three questions. Here's the three questions. Would you meet me for coffee or I'll buy you dinner if you'll just answer these three questions. And essentially what you're saying is, I want your map. Now don't say I want your map because they're like, <laughs> what? Okay, so they'll think you're just a stranger. And then we already covered that, okay? <laughs> they'll think you're strange. So, so this is your way of saying, Tell me what you know. And, and here's the thing about people who are a season ahead of you in life. And I'm a season ahead of some of you. We don't know how much we know until someone asks. So one of the best things you can do is you can reach ahead a generation and say, hey, show me your map, show me your map. You, you might be familiar with what's called the Vernon Law. You may have heard this before, even though you didn't know it was called this. Um, here's what the Vernon Law is, that experience, is a hard teacher because it gives the test first and the lesson afterwards. Experience is a hard teacher because, oh no, I failed the test and now I realize what I should have known. The only way to avoid this is to get ahead and invite information, authors or people into your life in this season. So when the test comes, you will already have had the lesson. And acknowledging, come on, you know this, acknowledging what you don't know and inviting somebody into that space where you just aren't exactly sure, that's not weakness. Asking for help isn't weakness, it's maturity. It's a sign of wisdom. Again, the author of Proverbs puts it this way. Listen to counsel, accept discipline, that you may be wise and listen to this you know, proverbial promise. You'll be wise the rest of your days. Here's what that means. You'll be wise in this season and prepare in such a way that you're ready for the next season. You'll be wise for the rest of your days because if the pattern, this is a pattern and a habit, if the pattern and the habit of your life is to be open to the counsel and the wisdom of others, you'll be wise for the rest of your days. So choose a destination in this leg of the journey or in this season and borrow a map and perhaps you'll get where you're going with, well, you get there faster and with less regret. Rule number four, gotta keep going, rule number four. Pay attention to the signs, <clears throat> pay attention to the signs. Okay, road signs are there for our protection as well as our direction. Um, many of us, some of us, some of you think that those signs are for other people, right? Yeah, those are for what other people need to do. I don't need to slow down the curve, I'm a good driver. You know, yellow light, that means speed up, right? So I can get through the, get the intersection. Um, you know, we just, we just, and then 
When we see other drivers ignore those signs, what do we think? Idiot, putting other people's lives at risk. <clears throat> Sometimes it's hard to see the idiot in the mirror, right? And the same is true in life for all of us, right? Again, the, the, the author of Proverbs, the prudent, the wise, the people who know life's connected, the prudent see the signs and they respond. The prudent see danger and they take refuge. The prudent see the signs and they respond to the signs. Wise people pay attention to the signs, the signs of what's going on with their friends. And you know, I, I see what's going on professionally. I'm not gonna just live in la-la land and pretend everything's fine. I'm gonna pay attention to the signs. It's always tempting to ignore signs. It is most tempting to ignore signs relationally. But relationships are like a combustible engine. Nothing improves with neglect. But one of the reasons we ignore the signs in our relationships, honestly, is we don't know what to do. When it comes to relationships, it's like, I don't know what to do. So I'm just gonna go reboot my, my you know, internet because I know how to do that. But relationally, I don't know. So we just we are tempted to ignore the signs, but nothing improves with neglect, especially relationships. So <clears throat> again, you may hate me for this, but if, if more than one person if more than one person has brought something to your attention that you need to think about or work on, that's a sign. If more than one person, and they don't even know each other, it's like they've been talking. No, you're the common denominator. It's obvious, it's not obvious to you, but it's obvious to everybody. If more than one person has brought to your attention something that you need to pay attention to, that's a sign. Do you ever heard yourself say this? Okay, don't ever bring that up again. I, I just wanna take that sign off my road. Don't, ever, I, 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 don't, honey, son, mom, whoever, don't ever, or I don't wanna hear that anymore. I don't wanna hear about that anymore. Or I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Quit putting, quit, quit showing me signs, I'm fine. What do you respond to in that way? You're ignoring the signs. You keep ignoring those signs, you're taking the long way, taking the wrong way. You may never arrive because the prudent see danger and take refuge, but the simple, I'm fine, I know everything I need to know, you're wrong. The simple, the people, to, they don't understand life is connected, that today leads to tomorrow and today is gonna show up tomorrow. The simple keep going and they pay the penalty. So pay attention. Pay attention to the signs. Last but not least, the fifth and final one. This is kind of the heaviest one, but I think it's maybe the most important in terms of getting to where we wanna get in life and ultimately getting to where your heavenly father wants you to get in life. The fifth and final one is this, don't carry unnecessary baggage. If you carry too much baggage on a trip, it just slows you down, right? You know, just weighs you down and it'll slow everyone down in your family and everyone around you who's trying to do life with you. Uh, uh, baggage is that, uh, you know, this is that unresolved or partially resolved stuff from the past. It, the, our baggage is the stuff from the past that keeps showing up in the future and keeps showing up in the present. And it seems to just make things more and more and more complicated. It actually empowers the past to define our future. It empowers the past to detour us from our destination of choice. And it's hard to unpack that stuff. It's hard not just to carry along with us. And the reason it's hard to, not to, to leave it behind is because it's part of our story. It's part of our life experience. So there's just something in us that's like, no, I just have to carry this with me the rest of my life because it was such an integral part of my life. But it's best to unpack and leave it behind. And the reason you know it's best to unpack and leave it behind is because you want the people you're doing life with to unpack theirs and leave theirs behind when it begins to complicate your life, but it's hard to imagine that. But if you don't, and if I don't, if you don't, if you don't deal with your demons, they go into the cellar of your soul and they just lift weights and they get bigger and stronger and bigger and stronger. And the thing that's so deceiving about this is the event itself gets further and further and further and further behind as you move forward. 
But the consequences and the shrapnel gets bigger and bigger and bigger and deeper and deeper. And as time goes by, most people lose sight of, most people lose sight of the source of their anger, the source of their bitterness, the source of their angst, the source of their, oh, you know, they're just too complicated and they're too sensitive. They lose sight of the source. When in fact, the source is something that happened as part of their story. This is probably what Paul had in mind when he said to Christians, he said, look, you, you can't help but get angry sometimes. Sometimes you're just gonna get angry. But if you're a Jesus follower, be angry, but don't sin. Figure out how to separate yourself in a healthy way from what caused you or made you angry and the behavior that just complicates your life. Don't let the sun go down while you're still angry and don't give the devil space or to contextualize it for our conversation, don't give the devil space in your luggage. And if you're not comfortable with the devil, we can change the word. Don't give bitterness and don't give resentment and don't give fear and don't give anger, a toehold, a place in your luggage where you carry it around over and over and over. Got any demons down there lifting weights? Carrying any unnecessary baggage? If you're not sure, <laughs> Um, the people closest to you, they know, they know. And they know because they have to help you carry it. The people who love you the most will love for you to unpack that stuff or to find someone to help you unpack that stuff or to use the apostle Paul's words. He's just direct. He says, just get rid of it, leave it behind. Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger along with every form of of malice. And then he tells us how, and it's so simple that it seems simplistic. He says, it's, I know you're gonna, you know, it just seems too simple, it seems too good to be true. He says, here's how you do it, by forgiving each other. This is how you get rid of bitterness and anger. You find out the source and you unpack and you forgive and you say, Andy, but you don't know my story. And you're right, I don't know your story. And I would never say this except for what Paul says next. He says, you are to forgive just as in Christ, God forgave you that we don't forgive because people deserve to be forgiven. They may not, but then neither did we. We forgive because we've been forgiven. We, we cancel other people's debts because God through Christ canceled our debt. And here's, here's the trick to all this. See, when you're hurt and when I'm hurt, it creates a debt-debtor relationship. The hurt, the betrayal, the abandonment, whatever it might be, it creates debt. And what happens is that their debt becomes your baggage. <laughs> and I've been there, we lug it around waiting to be paid back. <laughs> and the problem is of course, the people from our past, they can't pay us back. Half the time they don't even know they, they, that we, they owe us anything. And the other reason they can't pay us back is because we come equipped with rear view mirrors, but no reverse. And it's not fair to forgive. It's not fair because they actually owe you. But it's not about fairness. This is about your freedom. So cancel those debts, unpack all that stuff, choose to forgive, cancel their debt. You just decide, this is what forgiveness is. Forgiveness is I've decided you don't owe me anymore. And who knows, unpack all that stuff, you might be able to get by with a carry on. So those are the five rules for the road. Don't travel alone, don't pick up strangers, choose a destination, get somebody's map, pay attention to the signs and don't carry unnecessary baggage. You're gonna end up somewhere in this season. You're gonna end up somewhere in life. I want you to end up somewhere in this season in life on purpose and you get to choose. So follow the rules for the road. Perhaps you will reach your destination on time and on purpose. No questions today, but I'd love to pray for us. Heavenly Father, wherever this lands with us, Give us the courage to admit it. Give us the courage to say something to somebody before this day is over, just to get it out before we scramble back and go back into hiding. Father, for the man or woman, the student, the senior adult, the senior in high school who's transitioning into a different season of life, I pray that they wouldn't simply gravitate toward acceptance. I pray they would find some people, share their values. Father, for those here today, they've got some strangers in the car with them. It's so awkward to uninvite someone. 
in our lives. Just give them the wisdom to know how to do that. And Father, for those of us who are carrying around extra baggage, and we know we are, just give us the courage to get help and to own it and to apologize. For those of us who are moving signs and ignoring signs, I pray that we would just shut up and listen, and that you and your grace and your mercy would do that thing in us that only you can do. So give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and then give us the courage, the courage, the courage, the courage to step into it in Jesus' name, amen. I'm praying God to come and turn this thing around. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. I'm calling on the name that changes everything. God, turn it around. God, turn it around, God, turn it around All of my hope is in the name, the name of Jesus Breakthrough will come, come in the name, the name of Jesus I'm praying God to come and turn this thing God turn it around, God turn it around, God turn it around. I'm calling on the name that changes everything. God turn it around, God turn it around, God turn it around. All of my hope is in the name. something he is up to something god is doing something right now he is up to something he is up to something god is doing something right now he is healing someone he is saving someone god is doing something right now he is healing someone he is saving someone God is doing something right now. He is moving mountains, making a way for someone. God is doing something right now. He is moving mountains, making a way for someone. God is doing something right now. He is moving mountains, making a way for someone. God is doing something. God turn it around, God turn it around. 